The year was 1993. The summer blockbuster season was underway, and Steven Spielberg's second offering for that year, he also did uh, Schindler's List that year as well, was the sci-fi action adventure film Jurassic Park. Today we're looking at an item from the classic film. No, not the dinosaurs, but the amber insect that started this whole mess. I'm Rob, and this is The Constantly Racing Mind. I've had a few requests from folks on Facebook who DM'd me to suggest perhaps a Jurassic Park review. So today, I acquiesce. So if you're new here, we cover the film genres of sci-fi, horror, action-adventure, prop culture, and all things geek. So if you want more videos on these type of subjects, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be aware of my uploads. In this story by Michael Crichton, we know that Jurassic Park is about dinosaurs roaming about an island that John Hammond built as a theme park 120 miles west of the coast of Costa Rica. But how did they get there? John Hammond, a cross between Bill Gates and a dark Walt Disney, was obsessed with creating a spectacle that would rival no other. It was his scientists and the backing of his investors who brought this abomination to life. And to help with that funding, he needed the help of a few people. The paleontologist team of Dr. Ellie Sadler and Dr. Alan Grant, a chaos theorist, Dr. N. Malcolm, and of course, his lawyer, Gennaro. And to throw in some more chaos, Hammond's two grandkids, Tim, a kid who studies dinosaurs, and Lex, who is older but also falls into that screaming female trope that Steven Spielberg is so fond of in his films. So, let's take a look. And here to get us started is Mr. DNA. We get him from yours or my blood. Just one drop of your blood contains millions of strands of DNA, the building blocks of life. A DNA strand is a blueprint for building a living thing. Sometimes animals that went extinct millions of years ago, like dinosaurs, left their blueprints behind for us to find. We just had to know where to look. Now, 100 million years ago, there were mosquitoes, just like today. And like today, they fed on the blood of animals, even dinosaurs. Sometimes, after biting a dinosaur, the mosquito would land on a branch of a tree and get stuck in the sap. Now, after a long time, Mr. DNA tells us that the tree sap would just get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone, preserving the mosquito inside. And as we move to a lab, a scientist begins the process of extracting that DNA. This fossilized tree sap, which we call amber, waited millions of years with the mosquito inside until Jurassic Park scientists came along. Using sophisticated techniques, they extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and bingo, dino DNA. Now, they explain that DNA strand has a big hole in the center where the essential genetic information is missing. Now, the scientists fill in the genetic holes and completes the code. And triumphantly, Mr. DNA exclaims, now we can make a baby dinosaur. The show continues as the seats transverse into another section to explain using ostrich eggs, and they filled in the missing genetic material with amphibian DNA. And as many of you may remember, they recreated these ancient creatures as the same sex so they wouldn't procreate. But as many of you know, that didn't happen. And while it's called Jurassic Park, many of the dinosaurs are actually from the Cretaceous period. Now for this video, I went with Toink Toys off of Amazon. My other Toink item is the Indiana Jones Chachapoyan Fertility Idol. Now this item is only 3 inches tall or 7.62 centimeters. Now, while actually bringing back a dinosaur may be a long way off, but as humanity's intellect races forward, we don't often give our hearts or souls the time to keep up. Or as Jeff Goldblum's uh, Dr. Malcolm's character says, genetic power is the most awesome force on the planet's ever seen, but you wield it like a kid that's found his dad's gun. Also, Malcolm elaborates to Hammond, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. Now, not unlike Colin and Elsa in the 2009 sci-fi film, Splice. Now, Sir Richard Attenborough, who played John Hammond, the creator of Jurassic Park, is the brother of David Attenborough, who is himself a naturalist who has his own collection of animals trapped in amber. This was the focus of Natural World, a 1983 season, 22, episode 12, Natural World, The Amber Time Machine. Now, Michael Crichton wrote the novel in 1990, but he first got the idea in 1981. 
Now Crichton wasn't sure how to plausibly bring dinosaurs back to life until he learned about the insects in amber preserving their DNA, which was the breakthrough he had been looking for. He later learned that the idea is hypothetically possible. A weevil containing dinosaur blood from more than 65 million years ago was discovered in amber, but DNA quickly breaks down in insects, which is why Jurassic Park dinosaurs are more fictional. Jurassic Park was a fun and entertaining movie in my book. The first film in the franchise brought in about $402 million domestically and just about $1 billion worldwide, leading to five other Jurassic films with varying success levels. Now tell me if you liked the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Or if you didn't, slam the thumbs down. Subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of my next video. And click on this video right over here for more movie prop fun. Thanks for watching.